Hey everybody, welcome to lesson three for the on shape uh, how to make a keepsake box. Let's get started sharing my screen right now. So today we're going to go over making our the top of the box. We're going to do it in a couple different ways uh, using a tool called the project tool. And then we're going to um, make it so that there's a inside part of the box that doesn't slip off. And we'll do that with uh, a, uh, a lead in on that on that extrude. Okay, so you should have this box. If you don't, you can go back and review the other videos because we're going to start right from here. So what I want to do first is use this flat plane right here to create a sketch. So I'm going to create a sketch on there and you can see sketch one goes on that plane. Now I'm going to hit the N key to go normal. You can also use the navigation box over here and click top. <clears throat> so I could do this, you know, like this, and it actually will snap. I could create new geometry. It will snap a lot of times to those points, or I could do this, and I could, you know, create a dimension, right? Something like this. Let's say I know that that's three. I know that that's five, and then I put that right in the center. All right, so it's constrained, right? No blue, so that's good. So let's just show you what would happen if I do it like this. And let's say I just want to create like a half inch top box like that. So real quick, um, right here, you'll notice how it defaults to the add or there's a new. We did the remove last time. So if I click OK on the add, it's actually going to make it one. So we still have one part here. Now to verify what it looks like, we can click on a plane. So I could do this plane or this plane. Uh, let's do this front one. And then over here, there's a tool called section view right there. So what it did is it took that geometry that I was creating and it added to the current box. Um, and that's not exactly what we wanted to do in this instance. So we're going to go back to extrude to and edit. We're going to go new and you'll see how it creates another part down here, part one, part two, and there's two different colored parts. It's another dead giveaway. So now I'll click the, the check mark and you can see clearly two parts. So now if I wanted to, let's say, work on stuff, I could hide one or the other part. You know, if I'm trying to work on the top, I can hide the bottom. If I'm trying to work on the bottom, I could hide the top. So, um, yeah, but all right, so one thing I was going to show you is now let's say I want to go back and I change this base size sketch. Let's make that 4.5 inches. Click OK. Ah, uh, it's all screwed up, right? Well, that's because I dimensioned the top box with um, creating the geometry versus using the geometry I already had. So let's click Control Z to undo. Now let's go into this sketch right here. To delete this, highlight what I want to delete and hit the delete button, or you can go in and click things individually and delete individual things too. Okay, so there's this tool here called use, it's project or convert. The shortcut key is U. So if I hit U on the keyboard, it automatically starts it. So what I can do is I could choose a flat region to project both rectangles, or I could project lines individually, depending on what I'm trying to go for. Um, I want this whole region, so I'm just going to click on this flat surface here. You'll notice, oh, we didn't bring that one in for some reason. So I'll do this individually. There, so you see the black lines? Those are projected. So if I hit Escape, and I hit the green check mark, it's going to break this extrude, which we went over the last time, uh, because it it's depending on geometry that I deleted. So let's go back in here and edit. So it's looking for those. So I'm just going to usually clear off everything there. And then I'm going to click on, I want to extrude this region, and I want to extrude this region. Notice how you have to select both regions in order for it to do that, because it doesn't necessarily know. So we'll do both regions. And I want to do a new, not add, click OK. 
boom. So, sorry, I say boom a lot. <laughs> so I'll edit this and let's make this two. We're editing the base sketch, our first thing we made. See how it grew with it? So we can make changes and adjust it and things will move alongside with it. So that's, that's what the parametric is when you do CAD. Uh, if it's parametric CAD, that's what that means. So let's go back and change that to three. Dang it, I did it again. So it's like it's like my version of an um, so sorry. Uh, let's see, so now we have the box top and the box. So it's kind of hard to see the um, inside of this. So let's hide this first part. So now we can just see the top. Because what we want to do is have like a an angled taper lead in that goes inside our box so it stays in place. And we can do that by unhiding this sketch that's on the bottom here. And then I'm going to do an extrude. I'm going to click on this middle region. So it's going the opposite direction I want it to. So when it does that, there's two ways. I can drag that arrow down or click on this here and it will change the direction. But that's a little deeper than what I want. Let's say we only want to go like 0.25 inches. We don't want to go too far. Boom. There we go. So now we're, we got a little thing to help us hold the box top on. We want to add what's called a draft. So if I go to a normal view by clicking front, you can kind of see how it went. The, it went out the wrong way. Or yeah, it went this way. So that's, our box isn't going to fit together. So what we want to do is change this to go the opposite direction. So now it has a little bit of a lead in and it won't be um, like a press fit. So if we had this guy be straight one to one, it might have problems fitting together because just the nature of the 3D printing process. So sometimes you're, sometimes you're, I guess we'll call them like solid geometry, like, uh, uh, like holes and extrusions, we'll say, or protrusions, I don't know. Uh, so like, Sometimes your holes, the plastic contracts and expands. So your hole sizes are a little different depending on the type of geometry you're doing. So if you're 3D printing these, uh, you have to take that into account and have like a little bit of leeway for those. Uh, it's different if you were going to, let's say CNC mold this, um, or sorry, CNC cut this on like a, out of metal or plastic, you know, that would be more like line for line. And then you'd wanna, you know, have it based on your tolerances there. But the plastic, when you're when it's laying it, it's hot and it cools. So it contracts and expands. And yeah, so adding a lead in like this is always good for these kind of projects. And usually you don't have to do anything too crazy. You know, three degrees, one degrees, you know, you wouldn't want to do like 60 degrees. <laughs> so we'll just click that and we'll say, all right. So now if I rotate my view, I can turn my box back on. We'll click on this front right here and we can go back over here in this uh oh gosh it's like a, i guess it's a view box shortcut or yeah something like that it's the view box we'll call it because it's all everything here has to deal with views so we can go to a section view again and then you can kind of look and zoom in so if it was exactly one to one there and it was the same side inside um if this line was overlapping this line the box might take some effort to get it to close, but we added a little bit of a lean in to prevent that. So we can turn off this section view. If I click the okay box, it sticks, it keeps it on. Uh, I can turn it off by doing this. Okay, so I think that'll do it for this lesson. Uh, next lesson, we'll work on adding some customization and some fillets, basically round, rounded edges, maybe some chamfers, which are like angled edges. And yeah, so stay tuned.